today's video, we're going to talk about something so simple, yet it's something that so many players neglect, and then they wonder why their run defense isn't working. Let's get into it. Ooh, what's up, guys? Zam from the Zam on YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about a simple tip that you should start using no matter what defense you run in Madden 22 to help improve your run defense. Now, a lot of players think that stopping the run is all on your user gap shoots or having your inside stuff or no outsiders abilities in the right spots to stop the run. And to be honest, that's a good start, but it's not all of what you need to know when it comes to run defense. Every single defensive shell, depending on what type of coverage you call, has a run fit. And a lot of players don't even know that you can bring up your run fits and help understand where you need to be as a user or your run defense. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna help kind of explain the difference in the different zone coverages, uh, as well as some of the man coverages and what their run fits look like. Because I think a lot of players will call a certain run defense and not understand not only what their role is, but the roles of the players around them as they move them around to help stop the run. A lot of players might move a guy out to the outside, but not understand that he's actually responsible for an interior gap or vice versa. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to be going ahead and calling, uh, just going to play type, and I'm going to go random run. And we might get run on, we might not. But what we're going to talk about here is the different coverages and how the run fits work. So uh, I'm going to stick in a 4-3 here, uh, but you can honestly apply this concept to 3-4, nickel, dime, etc. cetera. So um, we're going to call little 4-3 stack, 4-3 normal, whatever you want to call it. And I've got... A, you know, a cover two press or a Tampa two style coverage. Uh, let's go ahead and put in a few other coverages. So uh, maybe a little quarters. Let's go ahead and put in a cover three sky. And uh, maybe let's do a little bit of a split field coverage if they have one here, like a cover six. So let's first take the field here with man to man, two man under. And in order to kind of understand what your role in your run defense is, you are going to basically take your controller and you're going to hold the left trigger. And then to bring up your run fit, you're either going to tap the X button, which would be square on PlayStation, or you're going to tap the B button, which would be circle on PlayStation. And uh, that's going to give you your directional run fit. So if I wanted to take a look at what my run fit looks like, if the ball is run to the right side of the screen, you're going to press B while holding that left trigger. So you're going to see here that all of these lines that come out of the defensive players are showing you where their run lane is. This is different than if you were to bring up your play art. So if I were to go ahead and bring up my play art, you obviously see here that this is your coverage assignment on the play. So every single player on defense has two assignments, their coverage assignment, which you can bring up by holding the right trigger or R2 on PlayStation. And then as I mentioned, the run fit, which you hold that left trigger and then for the right, you're gonna press B or circle, and for the left, you're gonna hit X or square. So you basically see that there's three assignments. Greenlaw's got man-to-man -man on the running back. He's got the right A gap on a run to the right, and he's got the left, what would be called the C gap on a run to the left. So with this particular player as my user, we're gonna snap the ball and you're gonna see here that the ball's run to the right. I need to fill that right A gap. If you guys are enjoying this free YouTube content, I would strongly urge you to go over to my strategy website. GridironGamePlans.gg is your one-stop source for all things competitive Madden. Every week in our vault update, we take a look at the meta or the most effective tactics available being used by pro players on the MCS circuit, breaking down not only how and why the pros do what they do, but most importantly, how you can counter those metas when you face them in online gameplay. On top of that, your subscription also includes any and every offensive and defensive game plan released on the website while your subscription is active and access to our Discord server where every single Wednesday, we have a live lab session covering the week's vault content and any questions you guys have about Madden. So make sure you guys head over to gridirongameplans.gg, $9.95 per month unlocks the entire website. Now, every other player on the defense has a role in the defense. You see here that in a two-man under style defense, if I were to bring up my run fits, you only have in this situation, six guys in the run fit. Well, if they're running the ball out of this look, they've got six blockers, being the five offensive linemen and the tight end. So this is something that uh, from a number standpoint, it's even. So it probably is advantageous 
for them to run the football. Even if I were to bring Greenlaw into the box here, you see that he is not involved in the run fit. So this would be an ideal candidate to user if you wanted to make this better. You also can see that on this play, both safeties and both corners have no role in this particular run fit. So if they were to run the ball out of this, which is just a simple inside zone, you're gonna see here that if we're not in the run fit, there's potential for that to, to pop being uh, that if they block that player that makes the play, obviously, you know, there's a lane there off that left B gap. Now, when you take a look at your coverages, your run fits are gonna differ. So again, when you take a look right here in this particular look, if you're in kind of a two man under, it's really only gonna have your defensive line and the players that are in the box in the run fit. If I were to go ahead and audible into a different play, like say for instance, the Tampa two, you're gonna see here that when I bring up my run fits, you now have both outside corners responsible for playing the run. So this is something that a lot of players neglect, especially if they play man-to-man -man coverage uh, of not understanding why their corners don't react to the run. Um, they kind of just don't understand that, you know, no matter what, uh, when you're in that two-man under, you basically just have what you have in the box playing the run. And if they're able to get outside to the right, being that this player right here is the force defender, Armstead, you're gonna be in trouble. Now, understanding that on a run to the right, Armstead is the player that's supposed to keep contained. You can also see that he's head up on a tight end. So if they were to go ahead and call a run, which uh, let's see if I've got one here where we could run the ball to the right. If we can get Dalton Schultz, the tight end to seal him inside, we're going to end up being able to get outside on that. So that ends up being a problem. So it's not only understanding what your run fit is, but also understanding the roles of uh, the F and the C players. Uh, the F stands for force defender, meaning that if the balls run to his side, he's responsible for forcing the run inside, not letting anybody or le not letting the ball carrier get outside on him. Um, now, the C icon is what is called the cutback defender. Oftentimes, this is a player that will stay home in the event that the run ends up bouncing back. So um, if I were to go ahead and let's see if we could call maybe an ISO, and if I wanted to kind of bend this back to this gap, that player is responsible for that area. So um, kind of understanding how they can attack that cutback lane is really, really crucial. Now, I just kind of broke down the difference between your two man under and, you know, kind of a Tampa two. Um, so let's go ahead and focus on Tampa two here. Because I think a lot of players, um, you know, especially the, the players that give up a lot of stretch runs, um, will kind of uh, appreciate this tip. You son of a so when I call a stretch, uh, let's call maybe uh, not an RPO. Let's call, we have a regular stretch. Eh, we got a stretch alert bubble here. Now, when you get into, you know, uh, a run fit, for instance, like the cover two, you have this corner that is on the outside that if the balls run to the right, that corner is responsible for keeping the run to the inside. So if I run this RPO, he's basically responsible for getting down off the edge. Now, the problem is that a lot of these stretch RPOs act like pass plays. So those players end up backpedaling. Uh, and you can kind of understand how that behaves here by looking at this corner right here. If I zoom in on him, uh, this ball's run and you see that he's backpedaling and he doesn't really react to the, you know, this being a run play until Zeke actually receives the football. If this were just a regular stretch run, he'll respond a lot faster. So that's something that a lot of you probably already know about this game. RPOs, you know, get those players backing up, um, you know, not playing the run really aggressively. So um, that's really, really key. But the other thing to kind of understand about playing a cover two defense uh, in terms of a Tampa two is that if this player is like, say, Deion Sanders, that is a light player that is responsible for taking on some big men in this play. You know, if he gets blocked by a tight end or a fullback on a kickout block or a pulling guard on an outside run, you know, that's going to end up being trouble. You need to have a player, if you base out of a Tampa two, that can be sturdy. Uh, that can really, really eat those blocks. So, you know, when you play a Tampa 2, you kind of understand that this is a run support corner um, as opposed to, you know, if you're playing, you know, cover three, which I'm going to show you right here, uh, that player is not involved in the run fit. So uh, let's go ahead and call, uh, I'm going to go ahead and call another run here. Let's see, we have a regular stretch. So, you know, in a situation where, uh, you know, maybe in the previous play, we have that 
again, that Tampa 2 coverage, let me call that right here. You know, if the balls run to the outside, you see that that corner, Mosley, is that F player. And you see here when I snap this ball, Mosley goes down and sets that edge, and that keeps me inside of that block where my linebackers can flow. But let's say that he's not doing a good job of that. Let's say that maybe you're playing uh, in your coverage. Um, you're playing, you know, the, the the cover two coverage and you're, you're pressed up. So, you know, you've got him up here. And let's say that he's just getting obliterated, right? And uh, we snap this ball and that guy gets out wide. You know, let's say that we're getting outside or, you know, this cutback lane is really, really good. If you're struggling in that Tampa two, kind of understanding how to switch up your run fits is super, super important. So, um, now I'm going to show you a cover three. So you see here in a cover three defense on a run to the right, you basically don't have those corners in the run fit again. So now that F icon is somebody that's a safety and he can kind of, um, you know, be the player that's responsible for doing what Mosley did in the previous play in the cover two, which is really filtering that run back to the inside. But understanding leverage is also really, really important. If I am in a spot where you know, I can get a good seal or a good kick out on that player, that can be trouble. So understanding how to move your players around based off of their assignment is key. You wouldn't wanna move this guy inside because that's gonna help really seal that stretch. But if you're getting beat on the stretch, it might be, you know, a good idea to kind of put him in this spot because then he's got slight outside leverage on the outside block. Now the ball snapped. You're gonna see here that he's gonna fly down, kind of set that, and then I just missed a tackle right there. But you see that we better set that edge. He wouldn't have gotten sealed nearly as easily. Now, understanding how to mix in what your run fit is with your actual abilities is even more important. If you know that you can keep that stretch bottled up with say this cover three coverage, you might wanna go ahead and fortify your dive defense with inside stuffs at this spot. So that's where you might go ahead and say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and, and pay up for two run stopping D tackles, one AP a piece uh, for the run, uh, the inside stuff ability. And you know, we'll just let those guys take care of the ISOs, the inside zones, those types of runs up the middle. And then we've got, you know, good faith in our run, uh, you know, our run support on the outside with our force and our cutback defenders. So, you know, if the ball's run here to the left, you see right here that Tart is responsible for setting the edge on the run to the left. So the ball snapped, he's responsible for keeping outside leverage on that, that slot receiver that's blocking him. Right there, he actually didn't do a good job of it. And uh, we actually could have given up a big run right there if I were controlling Zeke on this play. But um, you can kind of see here that, you know, in this spot, this guy needs to get outside of Amari Cooper's block. And that then filters the run back into 57, who can then actually pursue. If you imagine that number three keeps outside leverage on his block, the only cutback lane is really gonna be number 57 right through this hole, which is his run fit. So, you know, if everybody does their job, you stop the run, but you have to understand what everybody's job actually is. Now, there is one other tip that I want to kind of show you guys in this video that's gonna make this a little bit better. I don't personally believe that this is like the be all end all of run defense, but there is a large group of players out there that believe that if when the ball is snapped, if you click the right stick in, so this stick right here, that's the button that we click to send the nearest player or a spy when the quarterback scrambles. A lot of players believe that you can use this in the run game. And um, again, I'm not sure that I'm a believer in it, but um, really what I kind of noticed with this is, you know, the ball snapped. If you click that right stick in, you see how I was able to get that outside corner to kind of play the run a little faster. Um, so that's a way to kind of call a cover three shell, but then play even better run defense. So uh, right here, I clicked the right stick and I want you to see how this guy didn't backpedal. You see right here that he instantly played. He instantly flew down. If I don't click that right stick in, um, he will backpedal a little bit more. So you see here, I snap this ball. See how he's backpedaling? And you wanna be basically, if you're good at this, click that right stick in and that will help send that player. Um, so again, I'm gonna snap this ball, click that stick. You see how number four did that and really closed down that edge? That's something that a lot of players do run in their run defense. Now, is it just the nearest player to the run? Is it all players that are in the run fit? You can kind of take a look here at the top. Basically with this defense, there are three players that aren't in the run fit. This player right here on the outside, this free safety, and then obviously this outside corner. So when the ball snapped, when we click that stick, you basically see that it just sent the corner on the run side. And that helped in the cover three, but it doesn't make the safety come in. 
Um, and I think that there's a lot of players that think that it makes the free safety. Now, could that be a situation where proximity to the box matters? I'm going to move this guy down here and we're going to find out. So I'm going to snap this ball, click the stick. And there you see that the safety in the middle actually flew down and made a better play for you. So there is a little bit of, uh, of an advantage to running this. This can help again. And when you're looking at this cover three, we basically have uh, eight of 11 defenders in the run fit. When I move this guy down, uh, that helps add the player who's not in the run fit to the play. So the ball is snapped. I click the stick. You see that free safety flies in and it, you know, changes the way that the offensive line targets. So this is something that, yeah, I haven't been the biggest believer in over the years, but it can help your run defense. Um, you know, it can't hurt. It certainly can't hurt. Um, and as far as I know, it doesn't actually apply to, um, you know, play action. So if they snap the ball and I want to, you know, try to get somebody to play. So you, you see here, I, I sent the spy. It actually sent my hook defender on that play. So uh, I guess there is potential if you do that for a linebacker to end up uh, taking himself out of the play. So just be advised that that could be the downside to this tip is, you know, if somebody's um, clicking the right stick in, if you choose play action, you see right here, this player, number 57, he's supposed to be in a hook zone because it's a pass play. He ends up run committing right here. And now I have one less hook defender on this play. That could be okay. You know, that turns him into an extra blitzer, might cause a disengage. There's some stuff that could be positive that comes out of this, but uh, it is definitely a risk factor when you try this right stick mechanic. So uh, that is today's video, guys. If you guys liked it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. I hope that you guys now better understand the difference in the run fits based off of your coverage types. And obviously that R3 or that right stick click tip at the end to help improve some of your run fits. I know some games, obviously, you might have to stay in a certain coverage to defend a route combo. But, you know, that particular coverage is weak against a specific run that's in their scheme. Now you can at least use that uh, little trick to add to your run fit and get an extra body in the run fit, especially when you're in the cover three defense. So uh, there it is, guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow with our next one. Until then, this is Ann. Get in the lab and good luck.